Having good footwork not only helps you to be faster around the court, but it also helps your efficiency, which means you don't get as tired. Increased speed and you don't get as tired. Sounds like a win-win. But footwork is one of the hardest things to get right, especially if you've developed bad habits over the years. Yeah, so in this video, we're going to give you five actionable tips to improve both the speed and efficiency of your footwork. And we'll also give you some practices throughout that we regularly incorporate into our training as professional players. So let's get to it. Okay, so let's start at the beginning of your movement, and that is the split step. We see a lot of mistakes with this, but we're gonna share the three biggest mistakes that are critical to get right if you want to have smooth, speedy footwork. The first common mistake is standing with your legs either too straight or too narrow whilst you're waiting to split step. Having your legs too narrow makes it difficult to generate any power or explosive energy. And having your legs too straight means that your center of gravity isn't low enough. A low center of gravity is so important as it increases your balance and stability and you're able to change direction faster. This is why Formula One cars are so low to the ground and are able to change direction at speed a lot better than say a bus. And before we tell you what you should do instead, it's important to make sure that you're not doing the second common mistake, which is jumping when you do your split step. Yeah, this is a huge mistake because you're wasting a lot of time in the air. And in some extreme cases, if you jump too high, your opponent might already have hit their shot when you're still in the air. And if you jump up, you then still need to land and push off. And because of the huge downwards force this jump has created, it will make your next movement slower. So getting your split step right is the first step to hugely improving the speed and efficiency of your footwork. You should have your legs slightly bent and your feet should be slightly wider than shoulder width apart. And having your legs too bent or too wide or even doing both together means most of your weight is going through your quads rather than your calves, glutes and quads. And not using all of these muscles makes your next movement a lot slower. And as your opponent is just about to hit their shot, and we're talking milliseconds here, you should quickly drop like this, slightly widening your feet so that you're ready to push off out of this step as soon as you see where your opponent has hit their shot. Our third and final split step mistake is that we see a lot of people split step in the wrong direction, but we'll talk more about this a little later in the video. Okay, so the split step is phase one of the movement. Phase two is actually moving to the shuttle, and lots of you out there could be reaching the shuttle much faster if you took bigger steps, which is our second tip. As you can see here, I'm reaching the shuttle slightly earlier because I'm taking bigger but less steps. This might only be a fraction earlier, but if you add this time onto every shot in the rally and this time compounds, then look how different the rally could be. Now we have one very important tip to help you take these bigger steps and that is to use the power in both of your legs. This is where a lot of people go wrong. They just let their non-racket leg almost completely relax behind them. Just imagine Usain Bolt trying to push out of the starting blocks by just using one of his legs. He wouldn't have gained anywhere near as much momentum and speed. Or imagine trying to drive a car with only three tires working. It wouldn't be very fast, right? Anyway, we hope you get the point. You need to use the power in both of your legs. Now, if you've developed this common bad habit of only using your racket leg to move around the court, it might be quite difficult to change at first, and you'll probably find your non-racket leg getting very tired and end up reverting back to your old ways. So one way to combat this is, of course, to do more on-court training, but we'd also recommend doing badminton-specific weights training. And this is where we talk about the sponsor of today's video, ourselves. <laughs> only joking, but we do actually have eight weights programs and two circuits available on our website, which are designed specifically for badminton players to improve their speed, power, endurance, and efficiency around the court. Yeah, these programs include over a hundred different exercises, which all have video demonstrations. So if you're interested in improving your badminton, then we'll include a link in the description below. Okay, so now we've helped you with your split step and the movement to the shuttle. But what happens when you actually reach the shuttle? Well, our third tip is all about the timing of your lunge, which is mainly used at the net and at the midcourt. Where we see a lot of players go wrong is landing either too early or too late. And doing either of these means that you're much more likely to make a mistake on your shot. So let's show you what we mean and why this is a mistake that you need to fix. So if you look closely, you can see that I'm landing way before I've hit the shuttle. 
This is bad because if the shuttle doesn't end up coming to exactly where I am, then I've got to either lean to reach the shuttle and I'll be off balance, or I could be too close to the shuttle, which again reduces the control of the shot, but it also impacts my recovery for the next shot as I'm moving further than I have to. And if you look closely again, you can now see that I'm striking the shuttle whilst I'm in the air and therefore landing after I've hit the shuttle. This isn't great because I have less control of my body and racket, especially if I'm moving at full speed and I therefore have less control of my shot. So that's what you shouldn't do. And if you've not guessed it by this point, what you should do when lunging is land your front foot just before you strike the shuttle. Again, we're talking milliseconds here. This gives you control over both your body and racket, enabling you to play better quality shots in probably over half of the shots you play. There might also be times where you land at the same time as you hit it, such as when you're taking it early in the mid-court. And obviously, there are times where you don't lunge, such as in defence or in most rear-court shots, but we're not talking about them here. So how do you fix your foot timing? Well, to know if you're actually landing at the wrong time, we'd advise you to film yourself playing and slow the clips down when you're playing shots in the mid-court or the net. If this is you, you need to start changing your habits. You can start by getting someone to throw shuttles to you at the net like this, where you don't move too much and you solely focus on landing at the right time. From there, you can add more intense, fast movement to the shot, which better replicates a match scenario. Now let's move on to our fourth tip, getting smooth footwork. I know you can't see it, but trust me, that was smooth. Many of you will have watched players like Lin Dan or Lee Chong Wei almost gliding around the court with it looking completely effortless. Yeah, we remember watching Lin Dan hundreds of times and thinking, how can he look like he's not moving fast, but he's almost always in a good position? Well, one way to get smooth footwork is to adjust the speed of your recovery so that you never fully stop, as this is where we see a lot of people go wrong. You shouldn't hit your shot, rush to recover, and then completely stop. This means you've lost all of your speed and momentum, making you much less efficient. Instead, what you should do is adjust your recovery so that you're almost flowing around the court and you carry your momentum into your next movement. And our second tip to help you get smoother footwork is to make sure you're doing directional split steps and not always split stepping sideways. So, for example, if you're in the middle of the court and moving to your forehand forecourt corner, you would split step like this to make your next steps both easier and faster. But which way should you do this directional split step? Well, as we said on a previous video, the direction in which you split your feet, either racket foot in front or non-racket foot in front, determines which way you think you'll be moving. We also showed a few different practices in that video to help you improve your directional split step, so we'll include a link to that in the description below. But we have another practice recommendation to help you get smooth footwork, although some of you might not like this. But if you are serious about improving your footwork, then it's unfortunately necessary. And this is practicing shadow movements. Every top player will have done hours and hours of this growing up because building these good footwork habits are so important. But to ensure you're actually building good habits, you need to focus every time you do this shadow. Slow the movements down if you need to at the start, making sure you're implementing all of the points we've discussed so far. And then you can build up speed over time. The more you do this, the more these movements will become ingrained into your muscle memory. And this will enable you to repeat them time and time again in a match without even needing to think about it. So we'd recommend starting with really short sets, like 10 shots and you do 10 rounds. Doing this just a couple of times a week can definitely help you make some of these necessary footwork changes. And it only takes about two minutes. Yay! And one more reason as to why pro players like Lindan always look like they have smooth footwork is because they have great anticipation on court, which is our fifth tip for you. In badminton, you can be in great shape, but still be slower than someone in terrible shape. This could be because they have good footwork, but also the ability to correctly predict where the shuttle is going. So, to improve your anticipation, you need to do two things. Firstly, you need to look at your opponent's body positioning. Are they in a good position and likely to play an attacking shot? Or are they defensive and taking it late, meaning the shuttle is likely to travel in an upwards direction? And secondly, you need to see where their racket is facing. Is their racket head fixed and moving in a straight line across their body, indicating that they're going to play maybe a cross-court shot? You need to be able to analyse both of these to anticipate what your opponents are going to do and therefore adjust your positioning to be faster to their shot. An example from the world of singles is that you might play a good net shot on your backhand side and see that they're taking it late and likely to play a net shot back. You therefore don't move all the way back to the centre and instead you stay close in with your racket leg in front so you can get to their shot earlier and hopefully win the rally. 
In this situation, you can also know that if they do play a lift over your head, it probably won't be that good because they're taking the shuttle low down and therefore you'll still have time to move back to it. A doubles example, aside from serving to certain areas and looking for certain responses, is that you could notice your opponent hitting the shuttle just below the height of the net with a straight arm and a short swing. Here you would move forwards and therefore play a much better shot than someone else that waited to move until their opponent had actually played their shot. As we said, the slower player that anticipates well would still be faster to the shuttle than the speed demon that doesn't anticipate at all. A bonus tip for you is that it's also really important in both singles and doubles to play shots that limit what your opponent can play. All the best players are great at this and it really helps them to be quicker on court as they can almost forget about moving to a certain area. Improving all of these points we've mentioned throughout the video means that your footwork will be faster, more efficient and also you won't have to think about it as much during a match and this means that you can focus on other things like your shot choice. And if you want to learn more about shot choice and how to play these shots to get certain shots we've done a whole video on this which you can watch here. And if you want to learn more about the basic footwork patterns in badminton we'd suggest watching this video here. Lastly, we'll include all of the links we've mentioned throughout the video in the description below. And if you found this video useful, then smash the subscribe button if you haven't already and turn the notification bell on so you don't miss out on our future videos. And we'll hopefully see you on another one very soon. Bye.